Richard, hello to all of our listeners and viewers on social media. Just want to tell you three things. God loves you. It's a great day. And the nation's capital, it's a little chilly, but I got a word from the word that will warm your hearts. That's three W's. And uh, man, we serve a great, great God. We serve a good God, a generous God. And I'm telling you, it won't be soon or too long before we see the king. Um, I predicted going into 24 that it would be a little bumpy, and uh, it has started off with a bang. There's a lot going on in society, uh, but take hope. I'm telling you, Jesus is not only the light of the world, he is our only hope, and uh, keep your eyes on the prize. I want to give a shout out to some of our partners, uh, Sandy Burgess from Maryland, and uh, dear friends of 40 years, Bill and Barbara Morris are now in Florida. And uh, they have been faithful supporters of us. And Dale Dukes from Dukes Lumber in the first state, Delaware. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your generosity, your encouragement, and your support. And all those who link arms with us and pray for us and support us. Speaking of Delaware, uh, next week, Friday of next week, I have the honor to be a keynote speaker and tag team with the former world wrestling champ, Eight-time champion Nikita Koloff, the Russian nightmare, is one of my best friends in the whole wide world. The champ's flying in from North Carolina. I will pick him up. And we both are tag teaming Friday night at Bethel Tabernacle Church in Frankfort, Delaware. My dear friends, Pastor Dennis and Kathy Milner, we're speaking at a Man Up Men's Steak Dinner Friday night. And uh, it's going to be packed, but it won't be the same without Y O. You bring a friend, and then we're going to stay over, probably just hang out on Saturday at the beach. It's a little cold, but it's always fun to be near the shore. And then Nikita and I, uh, the champ, will be preaching Sunday, next Sunday, at Bethel Tabernacle. Um, The Lord just opened up the door February 22nd through the 26th. I have the honor to do a four-day crusade in Nassau, Bahamas, My longtime friend Derek Stubbs on the ground is helping make it possible. I was thinking this is my seventh trip to that beautiful country. Lord willing, we're going to be meeting with some elected officials, members of the government, and I'll probably be speaking to one of the police departments while in the Bahamas. I love the people. I love their smile. I love their heart. And it's nothing like seeing blue water in the winter. Can I get an amen? I've just been asked, Ruth and I have been asked to speak at a marriage conference in Southern Maryland in March, and praise the Lord, I will be in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Illinois this spring, and just got booked for two nights in two churches in the Peach State in Georgia. In April, I may be doing a two-night crusade in Romania. This will be my second time in Bucharest. It's humbling. I counted. I think I'm in nine countries in 2024, we'll be in the Bahamas, Romania. If you want to join Ruth and I to Athens, Greece, to Italy and Israel in September with Dorothy Spaulding, go to frankshelton.com. We got the Olympics in Paris for July and August. But I'm telling you, nothing is guaranteed other than salvation. I'm telling you, the one day it's going to get dark, but when it gets dark, look to the light. But you would do even better to look to the light before it gets dark. Our hope is not in government, it's not in globalists, it's in God. And I'm telling you, you can't go wrong when you look to the Lord. I want to dedicate today's show to Dr. Junior Hill, former vice president of the Southern Baptist Convention, one of the greatest evangelists of our time, Dr. Junior Hill, my friend of 15 years, went to be with the Lord yesterday. He was a mentor, he was an encouragement, he was a Barnabas and he could preach the pain of the walls, but he practiced what he preached. I love you, Junior, and today's show is for you. Just recently, we gave Hulk Hogan, the former world wrestling champ, an award. I called his office the day I just learned he got baptized. He always called people brother. Well, it has a true, deeper spiritual meaning now, because when he calls people brother, he's truly now the family of God. I welcomed them to the family of God, and Lord willing, Maybe Nikita and I can catch up with them in the future. Here we are at the start of the year. I have found a feasting and fasting, and I want to encourage you to do the same. If you've never fasted, Jensen Franklin, the well-known preacher in Georgia, said, quote, 
every breakthrough, every promotion I ever got in ministry was attributed to two things, God's grace and that season of fasting. Jesus said, I have food that you know not of. I have found a feasting and fasting, and there is a buffet when you eat from the Bible. When we get hungry for him, we die to the flesh and we live by faith. What's wild about fasting, it may seem slow in the flesh, but it is spiritual steroids by faith. I've said it a million times, flesh honors the devil, but faith honors God. Yesterday at Southern Maryland Christian Academy, I preached on victory. You know, it is iconic symbolism for centuries. When the hands are raised, it's not a sign of defeat. It's a sign of victory. The Gulf Stream doors of the DeLorean go up in victory towards the heavens. I think of Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Floyd Mayweather. They may have been battered. They may have been bruised. They may have been bloodied. But when they win, their hands are towards the heavens. Just recently, Ruth and I was with Sylvester Stallone, the iconic statue known around the world. Rocky III, it's the same pose. It's victory. Stallone did a movie called Victory with Pele, the greatest soccer player of all time. I like Messi, but Pele was at another level. And he was in a movie with Sly called Victory. And if you looked at the movie poster, it not only said victory, their hands were up. But I'm going to take it a step further. Even Christ on the cross with his hands towards heaven, suspended between heaven and earth, between a thief and a thief on his right and left, even dying, he was victorious. And his hands were in victory. And uh, I want to encourage you today, saints, you're not a loser if you live for the Lord. You're not a wannabe, you're a winner. And the difference between a champ and a chump is you. One of my dear friends, and by the way, if you would like our global newsletter, it's gone to 40 states now. Send me an email, frank at frankshelton.com. We will mail you our monthly newsletter absolutely free. It will bless you. Go to frank at frankshelton.com. It's our gift to you. We're not begging for money. We just want you to know where we're at, and you can send us your prayer request, and Ruth and I will pray for you. Kenny Baldwin is a dear friend of mine. He is a preacher's preacher. He is an orator, and uh, I brought him recently to Southern Maryland. He preached a message called, We're Going to the Other Side. I want to paraphrase some of his remarks. I do want to give him credit, but I'm telling you, this is the word for 24. When God says we're going to the other side, you can take the Bible to the bank. He just fed 5,000. If you think the Bible is boring, you're not in the Bible and you don't know the Lord. Hollywood needs to catch it with him. Jesus just fed 5,000 and bam, he gets on a boat. And he said to his disciples, we're going to the other side. You may be down, discouraged, defeated, depressed, diseased, been divorced, but if you're not dead, the divine is not done with you. The Lord wasn't getting on a Lear. God didn't get on a Gulf Stream. Christ didn't get on a Cessna. But the Bible got on a boat and he said, we're going to the other side. And as they went in Mark 14, 22, Jesus straightway told his disciples, get on the ship. We're going to the other side. And then they were halfway there and the Lord had already left to get alone with God in prayer in 24, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, was tossed by the wind, the waves, the weather. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus starts walking back to them. And the disciples saw him walking at the sea, but they were troubled saying, this is a spirit, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Remember this, fear is faith in the negative. Fear is trusting the devil, faith, trust in Christ. And Jesus spoke, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Did you know fear not is mentioned 365 times in the Bible? Not 364, not 366, it's a biblical fact, 365 days. Why? The Bible, the author himself, is reminding you every day of the calendar year, fear not. Why? Because faith outweighs fear. He said, come and one of the disciples said, Andrew, he said, Lord, Peter, if it be you, bid me and I'll come and walk on the water. And he said, come. And Peter jumped out of the ship. And for a moment, he walked on water because he had his eyes on Jesus. And when they saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and he began to sink when he took his eyes off God. And then he screamed the words, Lord, save me. The three most important words in all of life and all of Webster's 
is, Lord, save me. That's why in New York City on Broadway in Times Square, we did the hashtag, Jesus saves, because they're the greatest two words ever strung together. Muhammad can't save you. Buddha can't save you. The Vatican can't save you. Christ alone can save you. And Jesus stretched out his hands and called him and saved him. But then he said, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they come to the ship, the wind ceased. And then they were in the ship and they began to worship him. And they said, truly, you're the son of God. And when they were gone over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. Jesus told them at the beginning that they were going to the other side, and he did. And maybe today you're doubting, you're struggling, you're worrying, but I got good news. God is not going to fail you today. He will not fail you tomorrow. And you cannot go wrong when you look to the Lord. First of all, there's a desire for more. In 24, there's a desire for more. I'm not talking getting more goods. I'm talking about getting more of God. Not only a desire for more, a desire to do more. If you're saved, you're in the ministry. It's not for a select few. You may not have a pulpit. You may not get a paycheck. But if you're a kid of the king, if you're born again, if your name is in the book, my friend, you're in the ministry. You're a billboard for God. You don't represent Gucci, you represent God. You don't represent Jordan, you represent Jesus. You don't represent Calvin Klein, you represent Christ the King. And people are watching, and let's walk worthy of him. Not only a desire for more, we saw in this passage a directive to move. When God says go, you got to get going. The first two letters of God is go. The first two letters of good news is go. The first two letters of gospel is go. Saints can't be satisfied sitting on the sidelines. We need to get going for God's glory. Not only was there a desire for more and a directive to move, we saw the demonstration of the master's miracle. I talked to you about m and M's. Some of you think I'm nuts. Some of you may think this is plain. But the two M's, the master is still in the miracle business. I saw the archery team leave today to go to a tournament. You will never hit a bullseye if you're not aiming at the target. And one of the reasons the church is struggling today in America is we're not even looking towards the Lord, much less expecting the master to move in our midst. I'm telling you, I want not only a desire for more, but I'm expecting God to move. And then there's a distraction of the mind and these closing moments. Have you ever noticed you can have laser-like focus when you're having fun in the world, but when it comes to the things of the Lord, the phone rings, you got someone at the door, the appliances break. I'm telling you, we need to focus on the Father. We need to look to the Lord and we get our gaze on God. And then there's the deliverance of the Master. You know, Luke Skywalker is one thing, but God and Peter were water walkers. God is dying to not only save you, but use you in 24. And I want you to enroll and enlist in God's army like never before. And I also want to encourage you today, if you would like to, to be a partner of our ministry, we have some amazing things lined up, um, outreaches, revivals, the TV ministry is expanding. We're on Direct TV and Dish every week. You can go to frankshelton.com, click TV. We'll be on the Now Network tonight. We're excited about the Hour Radio Show now every week, Saturday night. Um, and Sunday, we're on Real Talk Radio out of St. Louis. And I'm telling you, God is dying to not only save you, he's dying to use you. If you've never trusted Christ, whisper this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner. You're the Savior. I heard that you died for the world, but I realized today with Frank on by faith, if it was just me, Christ would have died for me. I don't want to go to hell. Forgive me of my sins. I repent from my wrongdoing. Jesus' red blood on the cross forgives my dark, dirty past and cleanses me like new fallen snow. They put you in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day you rose again. And I'm asking you to save my soul. Take me to heaven when I die. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, email us today, frank at frankshelton.com. Our ministry will send you a free gift. And remember this. When you're down to nothing, 
Jesus is up to something. God bless you and go with God. Frank Shelton from Global. Um, so many. Coach, thank you for the leadership and love for the Lord. You've built a powerhouse football program. Yes, we are. Um, thank you. Philippians 4.13. Thank you, Mr. Shelton. Thank you very much. We'd like to do a, a gospel song, ladies and gentlemen, that we did in 1966 called How Great Thou Art. Little sing to my soul, Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. As you can see here, it's Priscilla Presley. And wow, I'm impressed with you. Um, I understand and know that you're a huge fan of Elvis's and that you saw him twice, I guess, uh, in 1977 at the age of five. Um, I wonder how that, at five years old, how much that impressed you. I can't even imagine. You obviously, um, he obviously did impress you very, very much. It's it's nice to hear that. Um, uh, and I also know that uh, this is your 25th anniversary of being an ordained minister. Yeah, August the 12th, I believe. Um, that's great, too. Uh, I wish I knew where you lived and uh, I could kind of get a bigger picture of it. But um, and you're having a huge party, uh, of course. You need to do that. I don't know if you've ever been to Graceland or not, but I, I, I hope you do go. I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, I hope that you go someday. I think you'll be so impressed if you already aren't, if you, like I said, if you did see it. But um, it's a, a very special place, very peaceful. You can understand why Elvis loved it so much and never wanted to, to leave it. Um, and uh, always went back to, to Graceland. As soon as he finished a movie, he was out of there and back to Graceland. That was his refuge. That was his place to think. That was his place to have fun, uh, get together with all his friends. And he would let everybody know that he was on his way in his bus to come back to Memphis right after a film. But you probably know all this anyway, right? And I, and I, I also see that you, have, that you knew Ricky Stanley Wow, he was a piece of work. <laughs> and that um, you were also a friend of Bob Catwell. Cantwell. Okay, that's great too. Um, and Deborah Bliss is, uh, is a friend, I know that too. And you know a lot. You know a lot. I'm really impressed with you, Frank. Um, and you also know, of course, that Elvis, Elvis loved, love, love, love gospel music. Um, we used to go to uh, a lot of gospel shows, I'll never forget that, um, and sneak in and watch all the gospel singers uh, sing, and, and uh, that was, uh, he started doing that when he was a very young child, and you probably know that. <laughs> anyway, um, it was nice uh, having this little conversation one-sided with you, but um, keep doing what you're doing and keep loving all this, okay? Thank you, Frank. Take care. Bye-bye.
What did Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson, and Tiger Woods have in common? They all had great coaches. Even Ferraris need a tune-up. And presidents, corporate leaders, and folks from all vocations need occasional encouragement and reinforcement. Inside every great speaker is a good teacher. Frank has been called the Yoda of encouragement and execution. Help you, he can. He has been in leadership since grade school. He was president of student government and prom king and on the basketball team in high school. Frank was president of a group in college and three decades later, the crowds were never the same size since he graduated. Frank was named a distinguished alumni from Gardner-Webb University in North Carolina and was one of only two students awarded out of the entire decade of the 90s. After college, he became an aide to the governor of Maryland, appointed floor staff of U.S. Senate, speech writer for a member of Congress, and fundraiser for a U.S. president and volunteered in four White House admin of both political parties. He covered both the Obama and Trump presidency respectively in the West Wing. He is in the people business. Frank has flown on Air Force Two and was a guest speaker at Andrews Air Force Base for staff with Air Force One. Frank has been in the room with eight U.S. presidents and counseled and ministered the heads of state at home and abroad. His TV show airs weekly to over 315 million homes on DirecTV, Dish, Cable, and other outlets across America and four continents. He has been a guest multiple times on Fox News, Hannity, and other shows weighing in on current events. He has spoken three times to crowds over 120,000 at Nelson Mandela Soccer Stadium and shared the stage with some of the biggest names in sports, film, Hollywood, and faith community. As far as branding or advertising, Frank has been blessed to connect with folks locally, nationally, and globally. He has appeared on billboards on Times Square, New York City, and his weekly podcast touches lives coast to coast. He has authored multiple books, Career vs. Calling, Blessed of Brokenness, Carrying Greatness, to name a few, but his latest was the number one new release on Amazon. Frank has been featured in newspapers across America, magazines, and was an extra in Rocky Balboa and Jackie, but was the only white character in an all-black film where he played a preacher. Thousands of movie scripts per year are pitched to Hollywood and less than half of 1% accepted. Frank's first pitch to producers for a full-length movie was approved and greenlighted with a multi-million dollar budget. Over the years, Frank has been a motivational speaker and addressed thousands of students in school assemblies. He has been a voice to chase your dreams, say no to drugs and bullying, be a winner, not a wannabe, respect for authority, among others. He has been a great help to teachers, staff, and administrators in both public and private schools. Most importantly, countless students have been challenged and encouraged to live right in a culture gone wrong. In the Christian community, he has been blessed to minister across America and around the world. He was on staff for five years with Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and has also spoken at countless churches and events. His humor, celebrity impressions, and gift to paint a picture with words has made him a much in demand communicator. Frank recently gave the chapel message to the players of the Big Three Basketball Championship at O2 Arena in London, England. Frank was a guest of the New York Knicks chaplain to help with chapel at Madison Square Garden. Frank was part of a faith advisory at the United Nations, and he's featured in an upcoming documentary on the life of a former boxing heavyweight champion of the world. Regardless, if you have trouble turning your dream into a reality, how to go to the next level or need a breakthrough in business or personal life, Frank has a gift to inspire, educate, and stretch your comfort zone. Millions have been touched, but some of his best moments are off stage, away from the bright lights, and connecting one-on-one. -on -one. The wealthiest place in the world isn't a boardroom in Dallas, DC, or Dubai, but sadly, a cemetery. Why? because too many took their dreams and wisdom to the grave, not Frank. He wants to inspire this generation. As far as education, he graduated from college and received two honorary doctorate degrees, but true success isn't just obtaining a degree, but the degree we live our life. Frank is big on faith, 
fitness, finances, and your future. Need a boost in branding, balancing family and work, casting vision, drafting a speech, establish morale at work, faith over fear, goals, integrity, leadership, living a legacy, marketing, mentoring, motivation, overcoming obstacles, politics, power of prayer, refining your mission, sales, team unity, the art of generosity, or winning in the workforce, we are here to help. Frank has worked with Olympians, Hollywood, professional politicians, educators, law enforcement, military, philanthropists, doctors, motivational speakers, clergy, artists, and more. Frank is seasoned with vocations in both secular realm and will be a great asset to you personally and professionally. Book Frank for your next coaching session. Email frank at frankshelton.com or call the office 410-973-1208. If you would like to bring Frank to your next event or outreach, visit www.frankshelton.com.